All right, here we are on, what is the date today? The 13th of February, PHP. Looking at, uh, first of all, we'll, we'll review this assignment here in the PHP form. The hand, the, where is this here? I'm in the wrong course. Got to go to the right course, of course. I thought I clicked on the CS420. Here we go. And here in the assignments. And we worked on the code. Uh, I've added another session base. That's a little bit more of an issue. Here we go. Form and table, PHP blog, form and database. That's the one you're talking about, right? Uh, or the form and table. OK, so you just submitted form and table. That was pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. And, yeah. So the one we have just been working on, and yeah, this is one we started working on is uh, connecting to a database. We've been able to do that. Let me zoom in a little bit here for you. That was the blog. Yeah, form and database is the is our PHP blog, and that's in the code where we actually seen the connection. And it wouldn't hurt to review that a little bit. Here, let me go and connect over to my server. I'm okay with that. Uh oh, it looks like my session died in the middle of me editing. So I'm going to recover this because I don't think there were any big changes. Okay, so remember what we did. And yeah, this should just is decently readable here for you. Remember what we did here is, we'll start from the top here, is that if we've been getting a request for a, and the form has been submitted, remember what happens here. Why am I doing this? Why am I saying if is set request title? Yeah, well, why why is is set what does is set have to do with it <laughs> why is it not why would when would it not be set when it when why would i have this if if it's if it isn't what is where am i on the page Remember the form, giving you some clues. When we have forms and submitting a form, remember when I have a form and I submit my form, that's when the request variable gets filled. This request is an array. If I have not yet submitted my form, the request variable will be empty. So this is here to only do this code when they've actually clicked the submit button. Remember when you do form, you have, let's go down to our form. Where's our form code? I think it's above here. Or did below here? No, oh, it's above. We'll go up in my form, and here, here is my form. Remember, when I first come to this page, it's going to be displaying my form with the method equals post. And when the form is first being visited, I have not yet clicked the submit button. So this PHP code, when I first visit this page, will not execute because request has not been given any values. When I click submit and the post method and the action, remember the single quote for action means use the same script for the action. Now the request variable will have something in it. This variable, this little function here, is simply displaying the contents of the request variable. So, just for debugging, I let me put a comment there. It's good practice if you're ever doing a debugging comment, just because your code might get kind of crazy looking, is put little comments here that this is a debugging line. And so, when you come back later to look through your code, right away you know that does nothing for me except help me debug. 
And what I often will do as I get more complex, I will actually have a variable debug turned on or off, and I have an if around it that I only show debugging message when I have debugging variable turned on, rather than having to edit the code to turn an on, on and off debugging messages. Okay, so down here now, what is this about? What's going on here? I'm specifically referencing, I'm referencing the title. And what? Uh, I am doing some kind of filtering on the title. Yeah, so I should have put a comment in here. Let's do that now. Is filter input to prevent SQL injection attack. Remember, if I put a fake query in my name of my title for my blog and they're not filtering that, passing it right on to execute a query, there's a good chance I could actually delete tables, modify data, hack into the database. So anytime you're getting input from a form, don't just say, oh, my title is equal to request title. That's asking for trouble. Always filter. So that's what that's there for. So here is where I'm building my string of inserting their blog entry into my table. So this assumes, in my case, that I have a table named blog that I'm going to insert into. And the four, val the four keys, actually the five column titles are ID, date, title, message, and IP for the IP address. Let me move my window here a little bit. And let me, I'll just shrink the font just a little bit to make it a little easier to, to see here. Uh, shrink my font just a tiny bit here in my putty window. There we go. And so that allows me to stretch it out a little bit. So I'm inserting these values into uh, my table. Here is the list of four items, oh no, five items that need to exactly match the column titles I'm giving here. Does that make sense to you? This is my query string. So tell me what this query string is inserting. Tell me what this is doing. What is this? Yep, it is the here's the letter T. T A table. This is this is the name of my table. This is the name of the table that I'm gonna be putting information into. This is These are the four columns in the table, okay? So that's in parentheses, the n column names, and then the values are then in parentheses matching what goes into each of those columns. So this is crazy looking. What is this doing? Yeah, let it take the default value for ID. Remember, and we set up the table to auto increment ID. This is a, a uh, environment variable I can reference ever I want the current timestamp this is a SQL this is telling SQL go find the current timestamp and put it there and then I'm putting single quotes around what what specific element the title variable which was assigned up here the filtered item what was put into the form 
text area named title. And then a single quote here after that, and a comma, and then a single quote to begin the surrounding of the filtered message. And this, what do you call this? Yeah, the remote address of the, not the server, it's in the server array, but remote address is what address? You got two choices, is it server or client? Yeah, it's the client accessing the page, because from the server's perspective, the client is the person coming to my web page. This is from the perspective of the server. The server is a huge array of a whole ton of variables. And we'll actually, in our practice with arrays today, we'll iterate through all the values that are stored in this server variable. Very useful. PHP My Info does it for us, but we're going to actually write the code to do that. Okay, so this is then running that query of inserting what we've put into the title and the message. Everything else we're getting from First of all, letting, letting MySQL fill that in, auto-update. MySQL knows the current timestamp. An environment variable for its IP. Okay, so you run your code, yours works, right? You've submitted this one? All right, let me check your blog and see what it looks like. So I will now go visit Josh's blog. We're gonna, I'm going to go over arrays today and... Uh, yeah, we'll work on that a little bit more. So this is J. PHP blog. So that's your blog, right? PHP blog.php. So there's your blog. And you're showing the recent ones. Yeah, and that's your choice as a designer. And if you were doing this for a real website, you would be doing CSS would determine your look and feel of everything, and we would be adding IDs all over the place. We'll go over that when we get to CSS. We're just getting PHP working. So I'm going to try SQL injection on yours. If you didn't have this and I did this into your code, I put single quote, semicolon, uh, show tables, it would show me all the tables you have in your database. Yeah, we're... No, this one... Because we do, you did the MySQL escape string. Now, why don't I see my new blog yet? I titled Manning Blog. It does say blog entry successfully posted. Why am I not seeing it here? Well, let's let's look at your let's look at your code. Well, I think it did work. Uh, Uh, let's do yeah so why didn't it show for me Yeah. Let's look at our code now. Remember, remember, just just pretend now. I have just submitted the form that submits my blog. Okay, the Manning blog. We know it made it, but now let's see what your code does. In the code, okay, we get our database information. We connect to it. 
we display all blog entries. Remember, this is the form that I just submitted entering my blog. First thing you do is show what's there already, okay? That's what this is doing. The select star is getting all the blogs from my blog table, all the information from my blog table. I'm displaying it. There's all the display, the while loop. That's all displaying what's in my current table. There is another display of the new form in case they want to add another blog. And then I see if they have submitted a blog. And then I build the query to insert it. So see what's going on here? I'm actually showing previous blogs before I actually process your input. And so, like you said, I won't see it until I, re I refresh it again. So to make this code a little better, yeah, I would probably do the insert code first and then show existing blogs and then show the form that, oh, do you want to submit another blog? Right. So it's just a matter of the order we're doing our code. All our code is correct. It's we should be, before querying what's in it right here, we should move our other code about, hey, you just submitted some code, let's put that in, and then show what's in your blogs, and then the form. So this is all having to do with the order, the logical or sequence of things that happen. Nothing wrong with the actual coding logic. And that's another thing you have to worry about with websites is, what do you need to do first in the sequence of processing the form? And because we, do, we basically were adding whatever new code we were doing to the bottom of our code, Right. Yeah, they'll have a separate page of. Right. And and be, just be for simplicity, rather than having multiple files to worry about, we're submitting to the same form. Your typical site will actually have a separate submission succeeded.php, and it asks you all sorts of things and confirms it and says, now click here to now go back and view your site. Right, right. Okay, so what I want to do now is, is uh, I want to practice dealing with arrays because we're gonna, as we get more complex and going back to handling uh, sessions and things, we want to get also uh, basic array handling because there's very useful. So I'm going to uh, remember this little thing right here, this piece of code to give me debug messages, and I, you know what, I'm going to actually commit include my comments there. I'm going to copy and paste that into a new script now. So I'm going to exit this script and I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to call it php array.php. So start a new start a new file, a new script, php array, and this is essentially just practicing dealing with arrays. It's not going to be a homework so much as a a, a practice lab working through understanding how arrays work. So start the PHP array.php and I'm using VI, putting in that code. Remember, this is on a quiz. I have I actually did compose a quiz over the weekend um, for practice, but since Andy's not here, I'll wait till maybe Wednesday. And one of the questions is what is the correct code for turning on display? turning on debugging or display of errors. And it's a multiple choice, so I've given you not have to write out the code. Now we want to practice arrays. So I'm going to put this in a lab using array in PHP. Now one thing to do here as a reference while you're while we're thinking about arrays is go over to php.net sorry w3schools not php.net that's our big reference manual w3schools they have learn php and they have There we go. 
I have to sh I have to zoom out enough to get the PHP uh, table of contents here, and we're looking at PHP arrays. So let's look at what th W3 School says about arrays. And they show you right away an example of how to actually create an array. Well, I want to show you some code before using this array function, just to get used to PHP and using them. Why even we why would why do we even use the array function? Watch what I can do. I can do this. And go ahead and do this in your code just for practice. Create an array. We're going to call this array A. I can do this in PHP. I can say array element 0 equals and let's give it the value 5. And I can do this. A element 3 equals the, the word 3. And I can say array, the same array name, element, and let's call this element Sam equals 8. These are all valid assignments and remember with PHP, I don't have to uh, declare an it as an array. I don't have to use that array function. The array function is there just to make my code a little cleaner looking. Let's prove it by running this code. Uh, but right now, all I'm doing is assigning values into the A variable. Let's actually display what's in the this array. So I'm going to put in here, display the values. And in my comments, what I'm going to just remind us here as arrays in PHP are key value pairs. Don't think of them like we do in VB or, or Java or C++ as numbered arrays. Think of them as I have a location with a name called a key. What information is being stored in there is called its value. So right now, A0 equals 5 means in key position number 0, put in the value 5. In key position number 3, put in this string called 3. And in key position Sam with quotes around it put in the value 8. And I'm going to jump right away to the very common way now of displaying the values in an array. Let's just use the built-in function print underscore r my variable whose name is dollar a and see what comes out and end my script. How did that become read only? Oh, let me copy that code. I forgot, I have one called array already, so I'm going to Oh, I'm in your I'm in your folder. No, yeah, I'm in your folder. That's why I can't mess with yours. I don't want to touch yours. I'm glad I wasn't uh, full sudo, or I would have just wiped out your work. Now, since I had started this practicing all this for preparing for this, I can just now paste the code I just did, and this this is PHP array two in mine. So PHP array underscore two. Now I'm going to go view that. Go ahead and view yours and see if it shows up. I'm going to AT Manning PHP array underscore two dot PHP. And there's what I get. Now remember this is the print R format output. So let's fix this a little bit to make it look a little nicer. 
So let's do this. Let's put this around it. Let's do before this do echo preformatted and then after that oops and the preformatted tag and get rid of my stray k the preformatting says you know what's coming out here is preformatted text if there are line feeds, new lines in it, preserve them. So now when we refresh, we get a little nicer to read output. So remember, and now we see that little equal greater sign, this means the array, the value associated, array associated with the key zero has five. The value associated with the key three has three in it. And it just happens to put it in the same order that I requested. So arrays in PHP, the important thing to remember is arrays in PHP are key value pairs. Here's another way that I want to be able to use this, because right now the print R is useless to me. It simply shows me the contents of that array. But suppose in a loop I want to do something with everything that's been handed to me in an array, or that in the array that I built up. Here's a great way to iterate through all values in the array. So watch this. we we'll use the for each. Come on now. Why is it not doing something? I. There we go. For each. This is a new syntax, so you won't see this in other languages. What for each is, is a way to iterate through. First I give it the name of the variable. This is, in this case, it's my variable a, and this only works if a is an array. I think I'll get an error if I try to do this with something that's not an array. Now this gets a little bit strange looking, but let's walk through it carefully. Oops. The k and the v are the variable names that I'm deciding to give to the key and the value as I loop through every element in my array A. I am deciding to give the key for array A as the I'm giving it the variable name key or K. Often you'll see other people use the word key. So the key the K stands for in this array the 0 or the 3 or the word Sam. The v at the other end of the equal greater than is the variable name that I'm going to be used to be the placeholder for the value in those key positions. So this is the syntax of iterating through the keys and the value pairs of any array, in this case array A. So here's how I would use the k and the v variable. So I'm going to echo and let's just put uh, key value equals k v the dollar sign k and the dollar sign v variable and put a new line after it as I echo this information to the browser and also put the ending curly brace of my very small for loop. Let me enlarge that text a little bit for you just so you can focus on that. Again this means that A is an array. The as means I'm going to treat this array as I get each part of the array who I'm going to know its key value is going to go in the variable k. The value being stored at that position is going to have the is going to be put in the variable v. Think of these as temporary looping variables. 
every time I read an element from A, I'm going to put its key into K, the value being held there into V. Now let's run this code and see what happens. Well, let's put some let's put some echo information before this. So I'll go up above this and insert echo iterating through the array. And I want to actually see a dollar sign, so I put the escape in front of it, so I actually see the character dollar sign. Array A, new line, and an actual new line in the HTML code. Uh, it's supposed to be iterating, not iterating. Someone knows how to learn to spell here. All right. So this for each, anytime we're dealing with an array, this for each syntax will come back to be very helpful to us. Let's see how it works now. I refresh my page, and I see print R is still giving me its output. But now I see as I loop through that, the key zero its value is 5, just like I saw in the print R. So this is the key, this is the value. Oftentimes, if all you care about is numbering, you can use numbers here in the key, just like you would a regular numbered array in many other languages. But in PHP, it's actually being stored. Think of it as it's a key value. They're always key value pairs. And if you read about the code, you'll hear them called associative arrays. I think it's only because I'm zoomed in. It's a, and the print R prints a different font style. And I can view that by viewing my page source. And I see exactly the code. See why putting the slash n makes your code a little more readable? Without the slash n, this would all be ga gathered together. So that's the only reason I put the slash n's in there if I ever view source. And and you see the print r has done that with their output pretty nicely. Makes it easier to read through when you're trying to debug and say, what in the world did I generate in HTML? Especially when you're debugging tables. That comes out helpful. Okay, so that's that's dealing with arrays. Now, let's give you... What's that? Oh, we got to go. All right, that's the end of this. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks for letting me know.